There we go. Here we are. There is the tier list. So, welcome everyone. Hello, I'm Yoshi Chief, and uh, we're going to do some discussion of Resident Evil games in the mainline franchise. So, throughout the past year, we have played through uh, all of the mainline Resident Evil games. So, like the numbered ones and the canon ones, basically. Not all the side games. Uh, ever since April of last year, we've been doing this. So, I'm kind of excited. Um, and now that we've gone through them all, I just figured, hey, let's have, let's talk about it. Let's talk about all the games before and let's, uh, let's rank them up. So, I'm just gonna cover a few things before we begin. Uh, number one. What I'm gonna, what I end up putting down here... It's just my opinion. It might align with yours. It might not. We can discuss, you know, the pros and cons of each one. Um, but ultimately, this is all just my opinion. It's not meant to be taken seriously at all. Um, if we agree on things, great. If we don't, that's also great. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's not that serious, really. Number two. The way I'm going to rank these is by several things. So one how the game as a whole holds up, and also my personal experiences of them, both first time playing it, and also when I've played it recently during my during my Twitch escapades. So I'm gonna kind of think about all of that and uh, base it all on that. And um, like I said, mainline games only will fill in the side games when we eventually get around to them, eventually, the big eventually for that. So, Without further ado, let's start with the one that started it all. Resident Evil on the PlayStation 1. Let me just like, there it is, there it is. There it is. Resident Evil on the PlayStation 1. So, it cannot be denied that without, without this game being as successful as it was at the time, there probably wouldn't be a franchise, for all we know. Or maybe the franchise would have been severely truncated. So, for that reason alone, I can't, you know, rank it badly at all, really. Because it's, it's, it's a good beginning. However, it has aged in various ways. <laughs> both good and bad. Biohazard is the best of the Biohazard series. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. So... I've only first played this, uh, actually only a few years ago, a couple of years ago. Um, I've never actually played, the, played that version when I was a kid. The very first version I played was Remake, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, so, obviously my views on my first time playing it are going to be a bit different than for people who played it for the first time back when it came out. Um... It can't be denied that a lot of the game is unintentionally hilarious. The voice acting, mwah, it's beautifully bad. It is, it's not awful, awful. It's just, it's beautifully awful. And I like that. The FMV scenes at the beginning and end, classic. Um, classic uh, sort of gameplay where you explore a spooky mansion. And it's nice that you don't immediately know where you're going. You could just sort of look around, see where things what B-movie garbage acting perfection. Exactly, exactly. Um, you get to play as two characters, Jill and Chris. So you have two different campaigns. That's that's also good content. Uh, they are slightly different in their gameplay and, and story as well. Uh, the bosses are okay. They, they, uh, they, they're there, and they have a presence, but depending on how you deal with them, you don't really need to look at them for very long, to be honest. And, um... The main problem is, is that it tries to start have a foundation, but some of it doesn't really age very well. So, for example, grenade launchers. When you find the bazooka as Jill, if you load ammo into the grenade launcher, you have to use all of it before you can put anything else in. 
Six shots, you have to use them all at some point. Otherwise, and so your ammo will just stack up in your inventory very fast if you don't know what you're doing. And that's, that's pretty bad design there. Uh, thankfully, that was fixed in Resident Evil 2. Uh, the other big problem is that there are there's no recovery if you get bitten. Because there are some rooms in the game where there are multiple zombies. And if they all are in your vicinity when you get bitten, you might as well be dead. You get bit, you push them off, another one gets you. You push them off, a third one gets you. You push them off, the original one gets you. Push them off, you know, you're dead. And in speedruns, if you're trying to do the 100% categories, there is a room near the end of the game where there's like four or five zombies that can home in on you and the room's very small and you have to make a specific line to dodge them all, otherwise you're dead. And you don't have the shotgun if you're speedrunning that. If you have the shotgun, then you could just, you know, shoot them in the head, no problem. That's fine. Uh, so if you're a casual player, it's not as bad, but like, yeah, it's it's not very good that uh, it gets to be like that. Um, I speedrun it occasionally as part of the trilogy, trilogy thing. Um, it's a, it's kind of a solid entry if you think about it, even though there's plenty of flaws in it. So for now, let's see. I'm kind of in two minds between putting it in either B or C. Uh, bear in mind, I can change my mind later down on the line if I if I kind of figure out. Oh, you know, you know, I might actually move this down here or up there. So it's not set in stone yet. S, I don't know, I don't know, Ruffy. I don't think it's quite at that caliber. Um, so. Mm, I am going to, for now, I'm going to put it at, uh, let's see, Heresy. Just because it has Enrico with that Kermit the Frog voice doesn't mess it, that say, say, doesn't necessarily make it S. I'm sorry. I'll leave it at C for now, although it's, it's more like a C plus at this point. Um, so, Resident Evil 2, the original. Um, actually, you know what? Make it B. Change your mind. I make it B already, so, uh, I... You know what? You actually make a good point. You actually make a good point. Barry... Barry being S-tier automatically upgrades this game. <laughs> I'll put it at B. I'll leave it at B. It's, 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 it's good. It's good where it is. Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2, in pretty much almost every way, is an upgrade over the original. Uh, once again, he plays two characters, Leon and Claire. Again, they have different weapons, um, different styles, uh, although they don't have like a health difference, I believe. They still have 200 HP, um, and they have slightly different stories as well. Voice acting is still pretty funny, but it's not nearly as bad as the ones, so it's actually, it's better. And... It already has some action elements kind of creeping into it as well. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Don't put, don't put it there yet. I'm not done. Um, let me just have a sip. Let's have a sippy. I like the setting. Uh, the police station, pretty creepy. Sewer segment, bleh. Lab segment, um... Lab segment is, uh, it, it's there. It's there. Probably my least, no, no, the Sue is my least segment, uh, favorite and followed by the lab. Police sta station is probably my favorite area of the game. Um, it introduces Ada. It introduces, um, the, um, the G monster. G monster is, is a pretty cool boss that you fight several times over the two scenarios. And that's another thing. The scenarios are actually kind of different where one can link into another and you can have actually a combination of Leon A, Claire B, or Claire A and Leon B and the stories are different between the two of them so there's quite a lot of replay value already there. Um, they've solved the pro partially solved the problem of you getting shanked up on several zombies because if you push a zombie off they now fall back into other zombies that they also fall down but there's still no recovery time for you so if zombies are behind you and you push them away 
A zombie behind you can just grab you instantly, so you, you, you get ganked. They haven't quite fixed that yet. They, that fix comes in Resident Evil 3. Um, my favourite character is probably Claire. Um, Alison Court does Claire a great service throughout her entire run in the franchise. Um, game's also not that long, even with the scenarios combined. And it has a lot of bonus content too. Um, oh, and one thing which I haven't really mentioned in, the, in Resident Evil 1. Uh, the music. The music in Resident Evil 2 is, f is absolutely phenomenal. Love the soundtrack. The soundtrack in the original game is fine. It has some good tracks, but, but in 2 it's outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Um, and yeah, the bonus content. So you have the fourth survivor with Hunk. That's a cool little mini game. You have extreme battle mode. Uh, another little cool mini game that you can do. And Tofu Survivor, where you get to do the hunk, su hunk Survivor as Tofu. And who doesn't love Tofu, right? Um, it carries on some trends from the first game. You always have the valve handle. You always have the rocket launcher. You always have a self-destruct system activated. All employees go down to the bottom platform. Blah, 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 blah. Um, it is a fantastic follow-up. Fantastic follow-up to the first game, in, in my opinion. Uh, and it still holds up fairly well today, I'd say. So I'm actually going to put it right bang in A. That's where it belongs. Absolutely. So, next up is, if I can actually find it. Where's it gone? No, not the, not the remake. We're not, we're not doing that yet. There we are. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis for the PlayStation. Now that is the first time I have to kind of think about it a little bit. It's not quite clear cut where this is. So, Resident Evil 3 in some ways improves on the second game. So, it has the dodge mechanic. Dodge mechanic um, is a fantastic addition where you can do manual dodges if you time your button press correctly when, there's, when an enemy is about to attack you. Or if you get attacked and then someone is about to attack you again uh, as soon as you get out of it, you automatically dodge one time. So you can actually get out of multiple grabs for a little bit. That's actually really good and well implemented as well. Um, there are multiple directions you can take the story in. There are life selections where you can select, oh, do I do this or do I do that? And there are several of those about the story. Uh, and not just that. It depends on what areas you go to first. Because if you go, for example, if you go to the restaurant first, then you get different cutscenes play there. But if you go to the office first before the restaurant, then you get then you have a good cutscene. So you can play through the game a number of times and you'll f or usually find something a bit new each time. Sorry, excuse me. I haven't really talked that much in in a short short time frame. So, um, plus Nemesis himself, absolute god tier boss. Probably, probably the best boss encounters, like in 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 the franchise, if if not the best encounters in the in the entire franchise bar none. His presence is immediately intimidating. He can follow you through rooms. Instantly strikes fear, and uh, when when that music plays, when he enters the room, you know, oh shit, he's gonna go after you, and he runs faster than you. He can use a rocket launcher, can absolutely fuck you up if you don't know what you're doing. And I like that you can optionally choose to take him down and get extra gun parts. You can get a cool eagle gun. You can get a cool shotgun, which is like the sword of shotgun from Terminator 2, with the reload and all. Um, and there's an easy mode as well. There is an easy mode where it gives you most of the weapons at the start. Great addition if you just want to play through without any fuss. Although I've not really played easy mode. Um, the bad. Kind of like its remake. It's a little bit on the short side. Uh, especially if you know what you're doing. Um, also... 
even though I love stuff like randomizers and things, so I love the rando aspect of puzzles where the puzzles change each time you play it. But I will say that not everyone is going to be a big fan of that. Because you'll have to keep on, you know, if, you, if you're unsure of how to do it, you might want to have to look at guides each time, and it can be a bit frustrating as well. Um, especially if you want to get the grenade launcher early or the magnum early, depending on your weapon preference. I always prefer grenade launcher. Grenade launchers are infinitely better than the magnum in that game. Um, and also, I don't know, it just, it feels like the sense of scale is kind of diminished a little bit compared to two, uh, because you do have incentive to replay it, like, cause, you know, like I said before, but, um, I just feel that it kind of just misses the mark on, com on compared to two. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's still a fantastic game. Um, it also has bonus modes. Again, bonus modes are good. It has the mercenaries. The first time the mercenaries appeared, where you can select... Um, you can select Carlos, Nikolai, and Mikhail. They all have their different weapons and such. Try and go through the map without, uh, without getting blown up. Hey, Barnes Summer 30. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to Island Paradise. Please enjoy your stay. Hydrate. I best hydrate. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome in. So. Plus, if you go the right pathway, there's Barry again, and Barry makes everything better. But it's still a solid game. So I'm also going to put Free Nemesis in the B category. Um, everything that's on the left is something I more prefer. So I prefer this more than the first Resident Evil. Solid B game. I think, absolutely. Next we have... We have... Survivor. Resident Evil Survivor. I was forced to play this on stream for the first time as part of a forfeit when I did my double marathon. Suffered many bites. Had to play it as a result. Now here's the thing. If we're rating the game purely based on memes alone, it would be it would be S tier. It would be absolutely S tier if it was based on memes alone. Voice acting horrendous. Um, the cutscenes just so weird and wonderful. And it's a very it's it's also an incredibly short game as well. But once again, there are different pathways you can take depending on where you go. Um, you always have to branch off into three different pathways. So there's three different stories you can you can experience, each with a different villain. And um, my personal favorite villain is the cleaner. It was like. <laughs> In fact, let me just, uh, rather than just paraphrase, rather than just paraphrase, I'm actually going to play a clip. Uh, there you go. Remember your mission. We're doing a clean sweep of the area. Everyone and everything must be cleansed. Now move out. Love it. Whatever. I don't have time for your pathetic games. I have already sent the self-destruction system. This island will be gone in a matter of minutes. Adios, Ark. But we have to kind of look at it as a game as well. So it's a light gun game. And if you have the Japanese version... You can actually use a light gun. 
Not in the American version, though. Not in the, not in the rest of the world. Got to use a controller. And it's bad. <laughs> um, you have infinite ammo with a handgun, but you can also pick up weapons along the way. My first major complaint is that you can easily miss weapons if you don't if you're not looking properly. Like in my first playthrough, I think I missed the shotgun. It was either the shot. No, 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 no. I missed the grenade launcher. I missed the grenade launcher on my first playthrough. And yeah, I probably should have looked a bit harder in that room, but very it's it's kind of annoying when you miss when you miss the room because then you can't go back. There are several points of no return, and uh, that that really sucks. Um, once again, very very short game as well. That actually is to its detriment as well as to its advantage. And really, it's just kind of inconsequential. The game is just kind of there, you know. Um, however, like I said, it does have good quality memes. Um, not much reason for me to kind of play this more other, other than just for requests and memes, but I'm going to give it a C grade for now. It's not awful. I could play it again in the future, but um, at the same time, you know, when looking at it as an actual game, nah, it's uh, it's not great. So, how are we all doing? How are we all doing today? Next is very divisive one, right here. Code Veronica. Code Veronica. I say it's divisive because the opinion on this game, depending on who you ask, is very, very split. So on the one hand, you have people who absolutely love this game. And then you have people who quite detest it. I'm kind of leaning ever so slightly towards the latter. And I'm going to explain why. First came out on the Dreamcast, then came out on multiple platforms. I played this first time on the GameCube when it came out, when the port came out in there. Now, the positives of Code Veronica. Soundtrack is once again absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely no question about that. Um, also, Claire Redfield as a character is pretty great. Uh, especially Alison Cole once again, with some exceptions. I'll get to that. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of nice playing as Claire and as Chris as well. They have both have different things going on, different weapons that you can use. Um, and some of the boss fights are quite, are a bit creative. Like Nosferatu, for example, is probably, probably the best boss in the game. The one with uh, the poison uh, and the lanky arms. Definitely the best boss of the game. But, and this is where, like, my first time playthrough came into play. I almost had my saves ruined from a couple of things that you can easily do as a casual player. Um, but if it weren't for people on the internet basically warning me, hey, don't do that. So there's two points where you can absolutely fuck your save up. One is when you fight Nosferatu as Claire. Because... You don't really... So, all you get, really... Any indication you get you're playing as multiple characters is the box art. And I think one of the screenshots as well shows you playing as Chris in, in like, the back of the box or something. I can't quite remember. You get vague clues that you get to play as multiple characters. But nowhere in the game until it happens does it actually kind of mention, oh, yeah, you're playing Chris now, bye. So you go to the Nosferatu boss fight, you get, you pick up your sniper rifle and all, all your other weapons, all your good weapons, because you're prepared for a boss. You want to have all your good stuff. You defeat it, you win, and then it's like, it's Chris now. That's it. No way for you to give some of the items to the item box. It just starts you off that. Any items that are 
that are in the item box, um, you can just pick up. But if you left all your good weapons to Claire, those are gone for the remainder, like pretty much most of the game. Bye. That's very bad design. You need to give casual players warning before you do something like that. Number two, the mag getting the magnum. In order to get the magnum, you need to um, get use the fire extinguisher. So you have to use the fire extinguisher right at the very beginning. And then you're most likely going to just leave it in the security box. Which is in the prison part of the, of the game. You're most likely just going to leave it there. You don't know whether you're going to use it again. But then when you play as Chris and you go all the way to the Antarctic Island. Um, oh, you need to put the fire out. To get this magnum. Oh, shit. And then you get to a place where, oh, you can use an empty fire extinguisher to fill this up. But if you left it back on the island, eh, eh, too bad. You missed out on the magnum. Again, very little warning. And number three, near the end of the game, where you find Claire, then you get to play as Claire for a little bit while you go and do the uh, Steve thing. And also the god awful uh, crystal ball puzzle. The crystal ball puzzle absolutely sucks. Because you put it down and then you have to pick it up, pick up the thing inside really, really quickly. Otherwise, the thing will crush you and kill you and you have to do that whole thing again. Fuck that puzzle. But you go back to Claire and then you. Uh, Go through, go through that bit, rest, and you try. Well, you don't rescue Steve. You, you, you kind of get to him, and then you go straight back to Chris straight after that again with no warning. And not just that, you go straight into a boss fight. Now, once again, if you decide to give all your good weapons back to Claire, and then you do that without that, you're fucked again. You fuck over your save again. Several times that that can happen to you, and that's just really, really bad design, and I don't know why they did that. Thankfully, that doesn't really happen again in any of the games, as far as I know. Also, Steve is the, uh... Oh, hello. Uh... Hey! Hey, hammer, 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 hammer. Mwah! You are, you are super great, and I'm so glad. I am so glad that you made partner. I knew, I said, I said that you would do it, and you fucking did it. Big kisses to you, yay! No, big kisses to you, dude. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, you, you absolutely deserve it, Harmer. Congratulations, there's the big purple tick. There's the purple tick right there. Uh, go and celebrate. Go go and absolutely celebrate. You absolutely deserve it. Uh, you're really, really great. And one of these days, I'd love to do it as well. But that will be far into the future. Uh, but I, 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 I look up to you. I look up to you guys. You, you guys are really good. Yoshi, Yoshi. I fucking hate Steve. Yeah, I, I, I hate Steve as well. See, yeah, we, we both hate Steve. Hooray! Uh, Steve is probably the worst character in the franchise probably your believer i'm sure you get there too one day well i'm just i'm gonna work hard i'm gonna keep at it that is that is the that is the goal that is the absolute goal um whether it'll whether it takes me a year two years five years ten years whatever um you know it'll happen i'm sure so happy when i got to kill him yeah <laughs> So the thing is, with Steve, they try, they try and kind of make him a dick, and then do the whole, and then they do the whole. Oh no, he um, he has his family who was killed, and oh no, you're supposed to you're supposed to feel sorry for him. Oh no, oh no. Except that he's been an absolute ass, and he, and you know what he does, Don? Do you remember, um, bit sort of early on in the game, you're supposed to find golden lugers, okay? as a puzzle thing to open a door. He finds the golden lugers 
And then rather than him give them to you because you need it, he's like, fuck you, Claire. I'll keep these. Go find some go find some machine guns for me. And you he's basically extended the game by about 45 minutes because of that. He could have just given it to you right there. But no, no, he has to be a fucking dickhead and runs away with him. And uh, I hated that. I absolutely hated that. Um, so I hate Steve. Steve is the worst character. He brings the game down hard. And another thing is the length. Now, I know a lot of people talk about games. The game should be longer. It should be have like a million hours or something. No, they don't. Not really. Now... Resident Evil Code Veronica, my first playthrough, I clocked up about 24 hours. First time. No joke. Because it was huge. The two characters' campaigns start together to take quite a long time to do, especially if you don't know where you're going. That was way too long for a Resident Evil game. So, you, you notice I spent like, what, 10 minutes talking about negatives? You can see why I'm not a big fan of this game myself. So it can't be denied. It can't be denied that the music's good. Some voice acting is all right. Wesker is awesome. His voice, he's voiced by Richard Warren there. It's it's all good, but you know what? Mm. Nah, nah, it's gotta it's gotta go under D grade. I I'm not a big fan of Code Veronica. I'm afraid. It's probably one of my least favorite classic. Resident Evil's, in my opinion. I might move it maybe to C, depending on what other games we get, but... Nah. Don't like it. Sorry. So, what's next? What's next? Uh, oh! Uh, let me just take a drink first. Take a little sippy sip. Oh, Hama, you need to get all your emotes in there as well. Upload all your emotes! Get them all in there! Alright. Resident Evil Remake. The first remake. Came out exclusively on GameCube in 2002. For a long time. It, it was exclusive to GameCube. And then later Wii. For 13 years. Before it finally decided to go multi-platform. And I'm not going to beat around. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. That's how remakes should be done. There are no other game remakes that will ever come close to this one. Never before and never again. I, I, I'm i going to say it right now. Uh, Shinji Mikami directed this. This is basically his vision of what Resident Evil should have been like in the first place. But with you know better hardware, his vision is fully realized. That was the first Resident Evil game I personally played. And I very much enjoyed it. It was spooky. The graphics are phenomenal even to this day. Music is once again suited very well for it. It is fantastic. It is absolutely mwah, so, so, so good. And hardly any content was taken out. There was just more content put into it. Like, literally, the only thing I can think of that's not in this game, but is in the original, is, like, a couple of extra scenes with Barry and Rebecca. Um, those that, that are not in the remake. But the thing is, that part being streamlined is fine. But you have puzzles switched around. The bosses are actually intimidating. Um, you have multiple difficulty levels on top of the characters that you select. You have the real survival mode where the item boxes are turned off, where you have to actually use them as proper boxes rather than them being magically transporting items from one to another. You have invisible enemy mode. You have new game plus where you can unlock weapons like the infinite handgun, the infinite rocket launcher. I mean, you could have those in the some of the classic games as well. Forgot to mention those, but like, it's uh, 
It, it just blows everything out of the water. And now that it's on multiple platforms, it's out on PlayStation and uh, an Xbox and PC. I'm I'm happy to speedrun. Uh, I'm speedrunning Resident Evil Remake later this month in the charity event. Um, there's not enough I can say about Resident Evil that I haven't said already. The, the remake, it's just... To me, like, I know even perfect games can have flaws right like not 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 everything is 100 percent flawless but if i had to describe one perfect game in my mind resident evil remake is the perfect game for me right into s tier boom no question whatsoever Whew. We're getting through them. We're getting through them. Uh, just give me a second. As uh, not really used to talking so much, like in a short space of time. As it's like, whew, gonna have another water sip. Um, what do people think of what I put down so far? Um, any general agreements or disagreements or, you know. I'm I'm curious to I'm curious to think was know what you think about all this because there's still several more several more games to go. So, next next on the list, we have Resident Evil. Zero. Now. Now then, now then, now then, now then, now then, now then. Resident Evil Zero, even though it came out in the same year as Resident Evil Remake. 2002. It is a different game entirely in terms of how much I enjoy it. So, new story takes place a day before the mansion incident it features an anime villain it features rebecca chambers who is more competent in that game than she is in the original and billy cohen who uh so this actually starts <clears throat> well actually technically resident evil 3 resident evil 3 uh technically started it hey daichi kamichi hello welcome on in um, but Resident Evil has what I call, <clears throat> pardon me, excuse me, I have uh, a magical island ma that's made up called the, the, the secondary character island, where characters appear and then they get sent off to the island never to be seen again. Do a tier list on Yoshi's tongues. I mean, there's, there's only one kind of tongue, so... S tier. There you go. That's the discussion. Hello. Um, so we're on to Resident Evil Zero now. So Resident Evil Three started the ca the, char the secondary character island gimmick with Carlos, but with Zero, it also has this with Billy. Now, the positives on Resident Evil Zero. It looks great. It looks beautiful. The the uh, the different areas have good lighting. Can be spooky at times, and uh, the characters look great. The enemies look pretty great. The music's also I wouldn't say as stellar as remake, but it's still pretty good. Still enjoyable. Now. That's fine. That's fine. Not not everyone has to be, but uh, that's the this is uh, kind of the time where uh, I discuss all the games I've been because I've been playing through all of those games uh, ever since last year, and I figured you know let's let's have a chat about it. So Resident Evil Zero, it tries two mechanics that works on some level but also fails horribly in others. So. First of all, it has the two-character gimmick, where you control two characters essentially at the same time. You can either have them in the same room, 
or in completely separate locations. You can switch between them with a tap of a button. That's that's good. Very easy to, to navigate. And they have different strengths and weaknesses. Rebecca can mix herbs. Billy is stronger and has a lighter. Well, that's about it. So the problem with the character system is that their health pool is so vastly different. So Billy is pretty strong with his health. Rebecca is like, as, as some call me Johnny, uh, correctly put, put Rebecca's like tissue paper. She gets bit once and it's already on caution. Two more bites and she's basically dead. Billy, however, can eat eat bites Rebecca! like a Rebecca. Rebecca, exactly. Billy can eat them like a tank. So you're basically just kind of want Billy to be the point man with pretty much all the combat, like all the time. You're you're basically gonna have to do it that way with Rebecca, you know, with, with supporting fire because if you're in the same room, it can uh, fire fire with you to do extra damage to enemies. Which is great. The other pro problem is they both only have six item slots each. And that actually kind of ties into the second big problem of the game. The item system. So, item boxes are no more in, the, in that game at least. However, they replaced it with a system where you can drop items anywhere you like. Literally anywhere, as long as there's space on the floor. And then you can look on the map just to see where they are. And if you need to pick them back up again, just go there and pick it back up again. Great, right? However. Because both characters only have six slots. And several things you pick up, mostly weapons, have two slots. The shotgun. The grenade launcher. Uh, the submachine gun. Um, and the hook shot. The whole, we're going to get to the hook shot in a minute. All take up two slots. So you basically spend a quarter of the game item management to basically drop shit, pick shit up, swap them all around. Because you have to pick up a lot of puzzle items in the game as well. It's very, very messy. And then there's the hook shot. The hook shot is one of the worst item pickups in, in the franchise. I hate it. Because you need to use it a grand total of, let's see, one, uh, two, three, four. You have to use the hook shot a grand total of four times in the game, right? But as a first time player, you don't know that. You don't know ahead of time. So you find the hook shot, you use it pretty much almost straight away. Then you get to the mansion segment. And you're like, okay, I'm not sure when to use this yet. So I'm just going to put it down in the main hall. I know where it is. You go trotting along. You don't have to use the hookshot again until you reach the church, which is a different area. Then you beat the really shitty bat boss. Uh-oh. You got a hookshot to the roof. Gotta go all the way back. So where you yeah, left the hook shot just so you can pick it up again. That to me is kind of unforgivable game design. And once more, on top of that. Excuse me. On top of that, the third time you use the hook shot is in the uh, sort of lab place, right? Now as a speedrunner would know, you always send Rebecca up because Rebecca can mix chemicals that are found in that floor and you solve the puzzle within two seconds, okay? But if you send Billy up and you don't have all the chemicals, as Rebecca, who is the weaker character, by the way, you have to go all the way back to the mansion area just to pick up a chemical that you need to use for a puzzle. And it gets repopulated with 
Eliminators, aka the monkeys. The monkeys are one of the worst enemies in the game because they jump around walls and things. And you know, and in most games, that's actually okay. But in Resident Evil, where all you have is auto aim, shoot forward, shoot up, and shoot down. Three directions. That's it. And you have monkeys jumping around all over the fucking place. You're going to miss most of your shots. You better hope your shots count. So yeah, no, um, if you... Uh, and the thing is, um, back to my point earlier about sending Billy up. In my very first playthrough, I sent Billy up. Because I didn't know. I didn't know that the chemicals you had to mix were up there and only Rebecca could use it. So that was a good play through me having to go all the way back to the mansion as Rebecca just to pick up a chemical. Um, and then, thankfully, you don't have to use a hookshot for the rest of the game after the fourth time. But again, you don't know that as a casual player. You might want to keep it around just in case. Hunters as well are pretty bad because... They can only be stop, uh, hit stunned on certain animations in this game. And sometimes you, you hit them with your, your shotgun. They can just absolutely tank it and still attack you. I don't know what was going on in that game. The villain is, like I said, anime villain. Very easily forgettable. The storyline to, to the characters you're playing as is completely inconsequential. Um, and then, of course, there's the plot hole of the magic elevator where it goes all the way from the mansion to the Resident Evil 2 labs or something very similar to them. So clearly a homage, but that's that's a that's a nitpick. And when I was playing through it on stream, uh, I had really bad memories of it, so it's going to go in D. As for what I prefer out of that or that or that, I think because the game's actually not that long compared to Veronica, I'll put it above Veronica. So there's Resident Evil Zero for you. Good earned water there. So next up, on the list, Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4. Came out in 2005. Was one of the first games I've ever imported from America. Because I, because I couldn't wait for it to come out in Europe. I had an action replay. So that I could play it on my GameCube at the time. My first imported game was Animal Crossing, but, you know, that's another story. Resident Evil 4 was so hype. I love the game. I think... Alter is, so if, if Resident Evil Remake is my personal favourite uh, Resident Evil of all of them, I would say Resident Evil 4 is my favourite action Resident Evil in the franchise. I can personally attest why, because I bought it on GameCube, Wii, Xbox 360, Steam version, um, Switch, PS2 very recently, which Northern Bear forced me to play on. Bad port. Uh, did I miss anything? No, but like, basically I bought it a w way too many times for anyone's comfort it has great action it popularized many things and the thing is it popularized qtes now qtes nowadays that it feels very tacked on and shitty but at the time it felt so cool to play for him at least to me anyway and it's you know Gears of War took some elements from it. There's a lot of games that took elements from Resident Evil 4. It, it was a pioneer 
of action games in that in that in that uh, time period. Um, Leon is hilarious. He's voiced by a uh, good, a uh, good voice actor, Paul Mercier. Your right hand comes Chris! off. Chris. His... We also have Chris. Chris isn't even. Chris isn't in Resident Evil Four though. Um, that's the weird thing. No, no, Chris. Uh, Chris is not in Resident Evil Four. No, no, just Leon and Ashley. And Ada. And Wesker. Um, so, it's a fairly kind of good length for first time casual playthrough. Uh, the village segment is the good opener. No. As the Resident Evil nerd, I can tell you 110%, Lucas, Chris was not in Resident Evil 4 in any shape or form. Trust me on that one. Um, Wesker made a cameo. Ada is an important part of the story. Uh, so... Yeah, so the story is... Well, story is, again, kind of a bit silly. I wouldn't say it's the best story, but... You don't really need it for something like this. It's... Action pack through and through. It has some tension moments as well. It keeps you engaged from start to finish. There are very little dull moments except for maybe some parts of the island, I would say. The graphics look great. Um, especially with the HD texture mods that people have been doing on the Steam version. And it has good bonus content once again. Oh, something I forgot to mention for Resident Evil Zero. It has Wesker mode for the HD version, and Wesker mode's fantastic. Resident Evil 4. Um, it has the mercenaries, again, but in a updated format where you pick a character, you pick a stage, you shoot the fuck out of enemies, get high scores. It's great. You get to play as Leon, Ada, Krauser, uh, Hunk, and Wesker. All having their good strengths and weaknesses. You also have um, Assignment Ada, which is inconsequential. You also have Separate Ways, which is the Ada campaign of the main story. Get to play her side. And you have all sorts of unlockable weapons, like the Chicago Typewriter, the Plaga Laser, which just instantly kills everything. Yeah. It's, um... The only bad things I can say about it is, like, in professional mode especially, it's very difficult, very tough. You can get ganked by, like, crossbow... Crossbow enemies are, are really annoying. They shoot from so far away, and they can be quite accurate. Um... <laughs> it also has a dynamic difficulty system, which has been in every mainline Resident Evil since this game, where if you play on normal difficulties... If you do well, the game gets harder. If you don't do well, the game gets easier. And it's a very, very good system that continues on to this very day. Uh, Speedrunners will refer to it as the DA system, difficulty adjustment. I have played way too many hours on Resident Evil 4 to, you know, <laughs> maybe have it be a comfortable thing, right? So, up to S tier it goes. Uh, just below Resident Evil Remake, but it's it's a fantastic action game. From start to finish. Absolutely love it. Then we have Resident Evil 5. Ooh, we're getting to 5. We just did this uh, as a race uh, last weekend. That was very fun. But let's talk about the game itself. 
it gets even more action eat, which has, you know, kind of annoyed longtime fans. It also, once again, stars a character that goes to the secondary character, the magic secondary character island, Sheva Alama. Who isn't a bad character. I actually don't mind her. But, um, again, yeah, it's so inconsequential. She never appears again, so far as I know. So, the good. Uh, soundtrack, again, it's not the best, but it's actually very good for me. Uh, especially during the action sequences. Can't deny that it does add to the tension. And, um, playing it in co-op is very fun. Co-op is the best way to go when playing this game. Because the AI character can still get hurt and still get targeted by enemies, even as an AI, and you have to save them. Uh, and it can be kind of annoying, especially for playing on professional difficulty. Fuck professional difficulty, don't ever play it. it it's not fun at all. Um, it kind of gets ridiculous towards the end of the game, where enemies start using guns against you. That, to me, is when it just starts going... You know, just down... Down the crapper. But before that... It's actually not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it also has Wesker as pretty much the best... Campiest villain in, in, in the franchise. Like, uh, I know his goals are kind of minute at this point just well domination rah, rah, but dc douglas does a fantastic job with wesker in this um it cannot be denied uh even though his boss fights are kind of annoying also it's very difficult to start a new game with resident evil 5 for whatever reason um it does try and borrow a lot from resident evil 4 as well essentially it's like, oh, remember the village segment from from the from Resident Evil 4? Well, here it is again in the public assembly, except it takes forever. Oh, remember the ogre fight uh, from Resident Evil 4 where you had to run around and shoot a big ogre down? Here it is again, except you are minigun turrets and you can only shoot use that. Yeah... It, it, it does try and borrow a lot, and it just doesn't... Yeah, it kind of falls flat a little bit. But it's also not an awful game. Quali the quality of the cutscenes is pretty good. And when you play it with a friend, it's, it's actually kind of fun. Bonus content, it has the mercenaries once again. With a huge, huge cast of characters. You have Chris, you have Sheva, you have Josh, you have Excella, you have... Rebecca, you have Barry, you have Wesker, um, you have Jill, Jill Valentine as well, to, with a lot of different weapon commas. I think it's probably one of the best versions of Mercenaries, other than maybe Resident Evil 6, perhaps. But yeah, it's, it's really, really great. Mercenaries is a very fun time with Resident Evil 5. So, with that in mind, I'm, I'm not gonna... I'm not going to put it down here. I think it actually deserves to be here. Just above Survivor. <clears throat> it is a good time. I'd certainly play for it again if I had to do a marathon of it uh, of the franchise at some point. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> then we have... Because remember, this actually came out right after 5, but before 6. Revelations. Revelations 1. First came out on the Nintendo 3DS. 3DS. Which, it actually looked pretty great at the time. And then it got ported to other platforms as well. You play as, Chris, you play as Jill, and you play as Chris, and you also play through several characters who end up on the magical secondary character island. Um, <clears throat> and you have to look around on a boat. And then look around in other areas. And then look around on a second boat. And then look around in watery graves. So, okay, the good. 
The main menu theme of Revelations is probably one of my favorite main menu themes ever. Um, great piano work, great string work. Mwah! Fantastic. Um, any other positives I could think of? I'm not sure. Because to me, it's kind of like, again, slap bang in the middle. Meh. Um, it does try and go back to some of its horror roots, but still is quite action-y. The dodge mechanic is really badly implemented, especially in the, in the modern ports. You have to try and, like, m press A and a direction, but it hardly works half the time. You can miss weapons entirely, again, without, without noticing it, making future boss fights harder. Boss fights themselves are very tough. Like, you can easily get yourself caught out. I've had to restart quite a few times on one of the first bosses. And uh, the last boss, especially in my first playthrough. That didn't sit well with me at all. Um, and again, it's a, it's not super long, but it felt quite long. And... The raid mode as well, that's like the main kind of bonus content. It's fine, but I much prefer mercenaries where you sort of have a time limit and you get to kill a bunch of shit. While with raid mode, you have to basically go from A to B and kill all the enemies in between. Which is what? Which is looking like what Resident Evil Village is going to take over. So I don't know why they called it mercenaries in Village when it looks more like raid mode. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, the story, it uses a lot of Dante quotes. Oh, hunters in, in Revelations. Fuck hunters. Absolutely fuck them. Uh, they can one hit kill you in, without, you know, barely any warning. And they take a lot of ammunition to drop, uh, to, to drop, yeah. And, um, they come in lots of waves sometimes in some of the chapters. And even though on my stream, the final boss wasn't actually that bad, I remember my very first playthrough on the 3DS version where the final boss kept on killing me over and over and over again. And I I was over it very, very fast. Did not have a fun time with that at all. Um, so not a bad game, but not a not particularly great one. It's kind of like meh. In the middle somewhere, so I'm just going to put it here. Consider this a C minus. Uh, so, then, then we have this one. So I'm just going to place it here. So the next game is uh, Revelations Two. Where where's Revelations Two? There it is. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay. I guess I gotta talk about this, huh? Okay, Resident Evil 6. Let's get the positives out of the way first. Once again, the main menu theme is actually pretty good. It also has variations depending on what character you're selecting as well. Love it. Uh, positives for Resident Evil 6. Positives, positives, positives. Some of the characters are actually well written. Like, so Sherry, Sherry Birkin, for example, she's great. Um, yeah. Positives, 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 positives. Um, um, no, I can't think of any. No. Uh, Resident Evil 6. Oh my god. We're being raided by Kino. Hey, Kino, how's it going? What have you been playing? Let's give you a hacking shout out. Hi, Pi Pi. You're last playing Phoenix, right? You're still Stay playing right. Phoenix, right? And we're going to watch that Dead Cells clip again because why not? Dead Cells crap, crap, is great. Crap, crap. Get to the light. Oh, no, there's no light. <clears throat> oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. <clears throat> no! No! 
You lost 33 God damn it, cells. You sucked. Such a jinx. Eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, we need to get you some more clips, I think. So, how was Phoenix right, Kino? How was it? How far did he get? Was it fun? I jinxed him there. <laughs> Oh, dear. I mean, I need to play Dead Souls at some point, actually. Definitely need to play Dead Souls at some point. So, we're, you've joined us in... Uh, uh, Tomo did make a Phoenix Wright clip, but not watched it yet. Oh, okay, so I guess it must have not picked that one yet. We'll have a look at it another time. So, you joined us at tier list discussion because I've now finished all the... Resident Evil mainline franchises on stream. And uh, we're just talking about it. And we're we're giving we're ranking them. It's all good. We're going on to with with a cart to Resident Evil 6. And I've listed two positives of the game. And now we're gonna go to all the negatives. The game is far too long. It is so long. Like it, like the recent playthrough I've had with Ruffy, right? Uh, oh, that's actually over this one. Um, I'm just going to tell you what. I'm going to open up my, my YouTube, and I'm going to tell you how long my recent playthrough with Ruffy was. Because that was when I was kind of casually watching the cutscenes, but also, you know, just getting through the game, right? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, here we are. So, five hours. Nine hours. Fourteen hours. Eight. So, basically, about 18 hours. And that was for a recent playthrough. My god, no game ever needs to last this long. Fucking hell. Um, it drags. It really, really drags. I only played a few on stream so so far. Zero, three, and four. Do you want to rest? Do you want to do the rest of the game zone? Yeah, you should. You should because they're all great. Um, so if I had to give my favorite campaign out of out of six, it would probably be either Leon's or Ada's. Maybe Leon's, but. That's because it has the whole zombie vibe. It doesn't have as much bullshit weaponry. But Leon has gotten too serious. He doesn't crack nearly as many one-liners as he does before. So he's kind of boring. You once again have loads of secondary characters that only make one appearance and have to get shuffled onto the magic secondary character island. You have uh, Helena. You have Piers. You have Jake. And you have Agent. Ah, <laughs> uh, agent, agent, agent. Zero doesn't feel like it counts because I was so bad at it and I'll have doing an off-stream speedrun to get unlimited ammo. Oh, uh, okay. Zero is pretty fucking hard. It's for, for a casual player as well. Uh, I agree. I agree completely. Zero is very hard. Oh, actually, wait. Third positive. Third positive of Resident Evil 6. If you're playing on your own, you don't have to look after your partner because your partner doesn't automatically die. There you go. There's a positive. Fourth positive. The, me the melee system isn't actually all that bad. You can do some cool things. You can slide around, do different kicks. It feels satisfying to kill enemies that way. Okay. Four positives. But then afterwards, it's here. Yeah, like, you, you play for the Leon campaign, you finish it, and then you realize you have to do three more campaigns. And it just gets worse from here. You have QTEs that come up way too quickly in some of them. You have boss fights that you basically have to repeat several times as different characters. Um... Especially through Leon's campaign, you have to basically fight the same person like three or four times. Kind of annoying. 
And you have the very underutilized feature where if people are playing through different campaigns and they get to a cross segment, you can actually join each other's cross segments. And that's a cool idea in theory. But nowadays, because hardly anyone plays a game, you're never going to see that again. And that is, a, that is a real shame. Still not tried five solo, played through that as uni with a friend and not since. You should play it with a friend. Solo isn't as good. I would say. Uh, so yeah, Resident Evil 6. It's too long. Um, some of the bosses are absolute bullshit. The inventory system is even worse than it was in Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 5 was not that great. But at least it was simple. You knew where to put items. You can attach ammo to weapons out very easily the inventory system in six though they're all on one line unless you have like different grenades and you have to go up and down that's very bad and also it's not just you can't it's uh there there words healing it's not enough just to make a green herb or mix green and red herb you then have to turn them into tic tacs and that's how you heal. You use Tic Tacs. That is so weird. Solo might be funner to stream, though. Having my Kino moments compounded by a bad AI. I mean... If that's, if that's what you feel is fun for you, then I'd say go for it. But to me, it was frustrating. And frustrating Yoshi is not fun, Yoshi. But, uh, it, you know, that's fair. Even playing co-op uh, with Resident Evil 6, though, does not salvage it at all. IMO. Um, Mercenaries mode is fun. Probably one of the best of it. Like I said, one of the better better versions of Mercenaries mode. There are several characters and stages. I think I'll give the edge to 5, though. But yeah, 6 is in the F tier. Fuck that game. I, I, I'm sorry. I know there are people who actually like the game. And fair play to you. I actually envy you slightly if you if you like six, because I wish I could. But nah. Not for me. So next is Resident Evil Revelations. Ooh. Revelations 2. Revelations 2 is actually pretty great. I, I like it. Stars Claire, although not Alison Court voicing her, someone else voicing her. And of course, Barry Burton, everyone's favorite Barry Burton. So you play through campaigns from Claire and Barry where they're six months apart from each other. So you play as Claire, then he plays Barry, and then Claire and Barry, and so on. I like that. I like that approach. Uh, what I hear about Six is that a damn good action game, but a terrible Resident Evil game? I mean. Yeah, but Resident Evil game or not, I still found it very frustrating. I probably wouldn't have, if if it was a different franchise that uh, that held it, I still wouldn't have enjoyed the game anyway. To be honest, I know I know where you're coming from though. I'm just gonna have a little sippy. Um, the weird thing about Revelations 2, though, it actually started out episodic. You had to actually... It came out with one episode. You had to wait one week per episode, and there were four episodes. So you had to wait a month before you could get through the whole game. <clears throat> I don't know if that really worked out well for it. Personally, I would have preferred having the whole thing there. But, you know, there you go. That's the way they tried it, I guess. Um, what's cool as well is that anything that you do, or indeed don't do, as Claire, actually has ramifications for Barry in his campaign, as you often go through the same areas. Um, looks great. Uh, you can play co-op as well. The co-op is very weird because the secondary character doesn't have 
uh, conventional weapons. They, they're like um, Moira Burton. She has uh, a melee weapon she can use and a flashlight. Natalia has bricks that she can pick up and she can point. Um, the guns don't feel good in Revelations 2, I think. I, it, I don't know. It feels kind of off. Um, and once more, uh, I, uh, what am I trying to say? Fuck. I was in the middle of a thing, um, waited to buy it once the whole thing was out after Revelations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, the, the previously, so the reason they had the previously on the segments was because that was, that was also in the first game, but the first game was on 3DS, so it was actually kind of necessary because you weren't going to play on the 3DS for that long. You usually have them as like a portable thing, so it was necessary there. But in Revelations 2, yeah, maybe not so much. I liked Alex Wesker as a villain. She was fine. Though her, you know, turning into a monster. There. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I didn't like Monster Alex. I, I preferred. I preferred human Alex Wesker, but there you go. Um, game looks great. Guns don't sound fine. Uh, oh yeah, it has raid mode, and you can do raid mode online as well with a second player. A much better implemented version of raid mode than in Revelations 1, I will have to say. Not just because you get to play as Wesker as well. <laughs> um... But there's a lot more stages, and it's continually updated as well. The one thing that gets a knock from Revelations, though, is... Uh, um, to get the... Uh, too bad they killed him off in such a dumb way in 5. Oh, you mean Albert Wesker. Yeah, um... Yeah, but what can you do? Like, they already killed him once. You know, they might they might as well leave him to die now. You don't we don't want to rely you don't want to rely on all older villains, really. Um so to get the best ending in Revelations 2, you actually have to do a certain action as Claire in episode three. Not four, but three. You have to do something there in order to activate the good ending. Which is weird. That is a weird place for a good bad ending to, to happen. And the pro and the trouble is, you don't find out until the end of the game if what you've done is right or not. And if you want to correct it, you have to go all the way back and do that whole thing again. Weird. Very weird choice. I don't know why they've done that. Um, Barry is just awesome. I love Barry in every single way. What can I say? So, Revelations 2. Yeah. I'd have it here. B minus, I think. I, uh, Revelations 2 is a good, a good improvement. Not quite as good as the other two here, though, but yeah. Then we have. What do we have next? Hey, here we go. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. The first Resident Evil game, uh, other than Survivor, of course, to be a first-person shooter in, in like, the main, ca the, the main uh, numbered franchise. And I will admit, my first playthrough, I wasn't as big of a fan. But playing through it on stream again this year, or... I, I'm, I've enjoyed it a lot. I think it's a great game. I think it's actually a fantastic game. Uh, music. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Very, very good. Um, it brings the horror factor to a big factor. It is very reminiscent of the classic Resident Evils. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Just because it's first person doesn't mean that it isn't. You have the creepy mansion. You have the cast of characters. 
In fact, I would say, ironically, the only characters in Seven which weren't really good was Ethan and Mia, I'd say. The main, the main characters are probably the worst characters in the game. The Baker family are all fantastic in different ways. Jack is the good foil that keeps coming back. Marguerite is just creepy as fuck. Zoe is a good sympathetic character. Lucas is just fucking nuts. I, I love their acting. I love their voices. I love their acting. Very good game. I wish there'd be more variety to the mold. It just wasn't that. Yeah. That's what I was gonna about to get to. The enemy variety, hardly any. You fight molded, you fight fat molded, you fight four-legged molded, you fight a molded with a claw. You fight mold you know you know what I, you know what I mean. Just molded, 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 molded. Other than the bosses. Ethan had no personality at all. Yeah, they were basically trying to make you. Ethan, yeah, they were basically trying to base it off you, but like, I don't know if that worked. That's why in, in 8, he's infinitely like, uh, from the demo I've seen, and we're going to be playing the demo after this, by the way. Ethan's already like a much better character in the demo alone than the entirety of Resident Evil 7. IMO. Me as well, she's not great. Um, Seven has a fantastic two-thirds of the game, I think. The first two-thirds, if it was just those, 10 out of 10 game. You know. But then the ship segment happens. I don't like the ship segment at all. Uh, it drags the game down. You have to do this videotape. Um, it's completely mandatory, by the way. Even in speedruns, you have to do the final videotape where you, you do the flashback as Mia with the SMG. Um, the ship segment bat is, is it's not that it doesn't it's not really that memorable. Everything kind of looks the same, basically. Um And uh even though and, and and the final boss is basically a gigantic cinematic. Like you don't really control most of the final boss at all. You do you have to shoot a couple of times. But then most of it is on rails. Not a very great final boss. It's it's definitely like unless you like a victory lap kind of thing, then it's not a great final boss, no. It has some connections to the past Resident Evil games, but at the same time you might as well call it a soft reboot if you like. Cuz it can stand on its own. Um, and it has good DLC. It has good bonus content as well. Um, the um, the uh, daughters DLC. Good insight into how the family got infected. Twenty one is a fun distraction. Uh, all the DLCs are fun distractions, except for maybe Nightmare. Nightmare. Nightmare probably wouldn't play as much as the others. Um, then the story DLCs are not hero with Chris. Uh, that's fine as like an action DLC, but not nothing all that memorable really, other than Lucas. Uh, End of Zoe though. End of Zoe is pretty great because of Joe Baker and his punching skills. Love it, absolutely love it. Um, yeah, it's a good, good extra content as well. So with all that in mind. Um, yeah. Solid A tier Resident Evil game for me. Very, very solid A tier. Then, so we have three games left from, from this series because the, the, all the rest of them are side games that we're going to cover in the future. Two remake. Two remake. Okay. Uh, da, 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 where to put this one now? Came out 2019. Fantastic use of the RE engine. Um, once again, 
Leon and Claire are, are a thing. Um, their voice actors are great. Um, the game looks gorgeous. So, a couple things. So we're gonna we gonna do we have to make remake and original comparisons, just like, just like the original, right? So here's the thing. Uh, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? It's a decent remake, but it doesn't fully live up to the original, I think. Um, don't get me wrong. Uh, there are things about it that are fantastic. Uh, Mr. X, for example. Mr. X in Resident Evil 2 Remake is what it should have been in the original. It's it's an absolutely fantastic enemy. Uh, keeps you on your toes. Though, eventually, you'll just find more, way, more ways around it. So it gets kind of redundant after a while. But definitely better implemented than in the original. Um, some cuts were made. Like, you, you can't fight spiders. Spiders were taken out. Some uh, areas have been kind of shortened a bit. I would say the lab, while I like the design of some parts of the lab, um, it's not that much better than the original IMO. Again, I'd say the police station's the best part of the remake. The... A, B scenario thing, or, um, oh, let's see what Kino's saying. Any criticisms I have of two are, I wish they combined some of Outbreak with it. Okay. Not enough time on the streets. They really needed, uh, the terrible, f oh, uh, you can turn that off, though. Y uh, d if you mean film effects, you can turn that off. Easy. Um, not enough time on the streets. I get that, but it was the same with two. You you barely spend time on the streets with with the original with the original game as well. Um, the 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 A B scenarios, the first second run thing, they might as well have not done it because it was so tacked. It felt so last minute. Everything you did in the second in the in the in the second scenario is basically the same as the first. The same enemies the same um boss fights you have to go through literally the only difference between the a and b scenarios is your character meeting with marvin and g5 the last boss that's it that is literally it everything else that you see differently is because you're because of leon and claire there are some bosses that are exclusive to claire and some that are exclusive to leon but that's nothing to do with A and B. Yeah, and they barely meet as well. Like, you hardly see them interact with each other, which kind of sucks. But it cannot be denied that I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun in Resident Evil 2. It has the hunk mode. It has the tofu mode. They're both great. The DLC kind of sucks, if I'm honest, but it was free anyway. You didn't have to pay for it, so. And you can put on the original soundtrack and original sound effects, if you wish, because the, the remake soundtrack, you can hardly hear any of it. Where is it gone? You can hear some of it, and then it just turns into ambient music. That's why the original soundtrack is better, because at least it continues to play. However, as much as I've kind of been complaining about that sort of things, um, definitely belongs here, I think. Remake showed a better way of doing it, just have switching characters to different parts. Yeah, basically. Kinda. But we'll get to Remake. But yeah, I'm... I'm Resident Evil 2 Remake, I'd say, is like an, a, a solid A-, minus. I'd say. Fantastic game overall. Then we have Resident Evil 3. Hum, 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 hum. Now, there's a lot of discourse on, on Resident Evil 3. The main complaint is that it's too short. Um, 
I mean, I, I could imagine that, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You don't want to add too many co-op elements in the primary single-player game. Um, so yeah, the main complaint with Resident Evil 3 Remake is that it's far too short. Now, yes, it is true that most Resident Evil games are actually pretty short in themselves, if you know what you're doing. However, I want, I want, pe I want people to have a guess, right? Because I actually have my very ever first ever playthrough of Resident Evil 3 Remake on YouTube, okay? Try and give a rough estimate. How long do you reckon my first playthrough was? And bear in mind, it was the first ever playthrough. So I, w I was taking my time with it, right? How long do you reckon I spent playing through playing through the first game? I'm just going to look up the answer now. Okay, I found it. I found it. So let me just put it onto. Let me just uh, show you on this on the screen. Let me just show you on the screen. Uh, if I can actually do that correctly. Eh. Okay. Can you see that? Can you see that? See the here. Four forty-two. That was my very... So, total playtime, 6.37. That's, like, including menus, basically. But my clear time was 4.42. No Resident Evil game on your very first playthrough, other than, like, side games like Survivor or something. It should not last this short. I'm sorry. It just should not. And that's not the main problem I actually have with it, to be honest. Um, my main problem is Nemesis himself. Mr. X is a far better Nemesis than Nemesis himself. Which says something, right? The only time you get to experience Nemesis as a pursuer in Resident Evil 3 Remake is the, I believe second time you meet him. So, like, the first time you meet him is through the beginning in cutscenes, right? Then when he drops down into the city, that's when, like, the, the true element of Nemesis kicks in. He follows you through rooms, he can appear out of nowhere, um, and that's, that's great, you know? That is the true element. That is when it's at its best, I think. But that hardly lasts any long. I was reading every note out to the chat. No, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and once you are comfortable in an area and you like it, it's already gone. Like, the, the main city part is my favorite part of the game. But then it just, it just, it just goes. You just go to the sewer bit. <clears throat> Some areas that you've seen in the original are cut out entirely. Um, absolutely cut out entirely, like the clock tower. Everyone loves the clock tower, but it not being in re free remakers, meh, meh. And the last area basically being nest too, basically. It's not a bad area, but I, I like the dead factory. I like the dead factory. That was a good final area in the first one. And the rest of Nemesis, you fight through cutscenes and boss battles. It morphs into the dog nemesis far too soon. Should have stayed as a pursuer for longer. Um, the positives, though, the characters. The characters of Free Remake are fantastic. Jill, great. Carlos, best character. Nikolai, very seething villain. Uh, Mikhail, great send-off. Even Tyrell, even Tyrell actually has a character, unlike in the original game. Tyrell is fantastic. Tyrell is just good. Worst segment in worst segment in the game, probably uh, the holdout with Carlos in the hospital. It's like Capcom was like, "Hey, remember that cabin segment in Resident Evil Four? Let's just do that again, but in the hospital, and with just zombies and hunters occasionally." 
Yeah. Uh, dodge system, again, was, was brought over to this one, and it was fine, but uh, it felt kind of finicky at points. And it taking, I mean, it taking defense items away was a good way to balance it out, but it frustrated a few people, I know that much. Um, the music, uh, again, the soundtrack is actually really good in, in Remake 3 as well. Very, very good. But then once you finish it, there's not much else to really do other than play it at the higher difficulties. Like, you, you have... Hardcore, you have Nightmare, and you have Inferno. I've not actually finished Nightmare mode yet, but I don't know if I really want to at this point. But that's all you can do. There's no bonus content. Yeah, you couldn't dismember as well. Good point. Good point, Kino. You can't dismember zombies in this. Why? Uh -huh. Um, yeah. Didn't really feel that great. It felt it felt like a discount. It, it, it felt like DLC, basically. It coming out for £40. And yes, I know. But it also comes with Resident Evil Resistance. But, um... No. Not a good enough game to package with it, I'm afraid. Uh, and yeah, zero bonus content. You can buy shop items to kind of help you through, like, the higher difficulty levels, but... There's no mercenaries mode. There's no epilogues to unlock. There's only one costume you can get other than the pre-order set. That's not... It doesn't look great as well. It felt like... It could have done so. So it's not a terrible game. As a game on its own, it's still a great game, but... I think it's it belongs here. In the C tier. Above Resident Evil 5. But that's about it. And then the last game we have to talk about. Which, again, you know. Not much else to really say. Resistance, which we've just played earlier today. There. It belongs here. It belongs in D tier. It's not as bad as Resident Evil 6, of course. But then again, it's a multiplayer mode. And it has great ideas. They were not well executed. And it needed a it needed a good multiplayer base. Didn't really have any. I, I played it at launch a few times. It was fun. But then there was no reason for me to really stick around. Like the idea. But it, it, it didn't really want, keep me to... It didn't really give me a reason to stick around, basically. So not much else to say. So there it is. And that's it. So all the rest of the games down here, those are all side games. Uh, I will play them at some point in the future, but I want to give the casual-ish franchise playthrough for Resident Evil 5 a little bit of a rest for now, as we've gone through all of this. I pre-ordered free, not even played Resistance, knowing it had loot boxes and... Extra consumables, fuck that, yeah. At the very least, you didn't really have to pay for them. I know there was an option to, but you, you were never really forced to pay for them. That's the slight plus side. Um, but there you go. That's my list right here. So, S tier, Resi uh, 1 remake and 4. A tier, 2 original, 7 and 2 remake. B tier, 3 nemesis. Resident Evil 1, the original, and Revelations 2. C tier, 3 remake, 5, Survivor, Revelations 1. D tier, 0, Code Veronica, Resistance, and F tier, 6. There you go. That is my list. Again, this is only my personal list. Yours could be very different, or it could be similar, or it could be somewhere in between. Um, but I hope that... You know, whether you were here from the start or whether you came in recently, that we had a good time talking about it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I am... Uh, other than me playing through Village tomorrow and Saturday, I'm done with the mainline franchise after about a year of doing it, and that's it. Uh, I'm gonna... You know what? That deserves 
That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have all night. Oh. Personally, four is much lower for me because I really don't like the aiming system. Okay, okay. It was a great game on N64, but playing on the Xbox One, I just hated the aim because, uh... Wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. Kino, 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 wait a minute. N64? What do you mean? It wasn't on N64. What, do you mean GameCube? And what do you mean not proper, uh, oh, right, okay. So I would say, Kino, in, in, in response to that, if you can find the Wii version, give that a try, because the pointer aiming on the Wii version is so good. It is the best version of Resident Evil 4, I think, the Wii version. Uh, pointer controls aims very accurately. It makes you a better shooter. And it's a very fun, very fun experience. Definitely give that a try. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, when we get back to the franchise at, at some point in the future, here's what we're going to be playing, right? We're going to be playing... Let's see. Outbreak. Outbreak File 2. Uh, we're also going to be playing through Umbrella Chronicles. Dark Side Chronicles, Dead Aim, uh, Mercenaries 3D, yeah, um, Deadly Silence, Operation Raccoon City, yeah, Umbrella Corps, <laughs> Umbrella Corps, no, um, and as you can see up on there, up on the up there. Resident Evil Gaiden. Only playing it if I ever reach 100 subs. And it ain't gonna be any earlier than that. So if people really want me to play it in the next few years, you know what to do. But that's it. That is the end of the Resident Evil tier discussion. Hope you all enjoyed. The Wii version is much better. That's why I rate uh, the others even lower. Because yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I understand that. I understand that. Resident Evil Four is not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. But for me, like I, you can tell that I enjoy Resident Evil Four uh, because I bought it like five or six times. <laughs> That's how much you know I enjoy it, really. And when it comes to Resident Evil 6 being F tier, basically everything else above it is, would I be willing to play it in a marathon? Zero, would I be able to play it in a marathon? Yes. Code Veronica? Yes. Six? No. Hell no. And that's it. That's all she wrote. Oh, man, that was good. That was good. Uh, thank you, thank you for, uh, attending. Even if you were just a lurker, lurking about, um, it is much appreciated. And that is that. <laughs>